This time we'll call the August 7th meeting of the Plaquemines Parish Port Harbor and Terminal District Committee to order at 10.07. If we, uh, machines open for roll call. The record reflect we have three uh, committee members present. Mr. Bartholomew is absent. If we could please stand for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, before we get started, uh, I'd just like to recognize Mr. Eric Sundstrom. Our port lobbyist uh, in Baton Rouge. Thanks, Eric, for, for coming down. Uh, next item, please. Chairman's comments. I just have one comment. Uh, the next port committee meeting will be on September the 5th at 10 a.m. at the Port Sofa YMCA. Port staff go with that? Good. 10 a.m., September the 5th, Port Sofa YMCA. That's all I have. Financial reports, Ms. Williams. Sorry, hold on. Good morning. Good morning. Um, we recently, for this port committee meeting, we um, I changed up the report a little bit. I usually give you guys a update basically just on the revenues. Um, we recently went, the state changed some um, procedures and they required that we um, communicate the budget versus actual. So I've provided a report for everyone. It's attached to the back of the recap on the financial notes and um, basically this goes over, it combines all of our departments into the um, four different budgets. So I have all of the revenues listed, all of the personal services listed, um, finance services operating, and then capital outlay follows. Um, so this is basically a um, the budget and then the middle column is the actual as of June 30th. And um, I didn't do July so that we can have, you know, it's still the beginning of August and some of the July billing is still trickling in. So I ended it at June 3rd so we can have um, better numbers and cleaner numbers to look at. So I'll basically just give a recap of the total budget and how we're looking as of June 30th. Um, total revenues, we have about 63% remaining to, uh, to assess. We have uh, total personal services, we have about 55.19% remaining in that budget. Financial services, about 83.86% remaining and the reason why that's a little high is because this number does not reflect the second quarter parochial payment which is usually done in July. She has till about July 15th to make that payment. Um, total operating services are at about 69.93% remaining. Total capital outlay 47.2% remaining. Um, and we are a little bit below on that because right at June 30th you should be looking at about 50% but we've already um, done most of our expenditures for that and uh, we don't have many remaining for the capital outlay. Um, my next point I want to touch on is our policies that are under review. Well, do anyone have any questions regarding the budget? I'm sorry. And if so, I know this is, you know, I, I gave some details. So if you want to review, just get back, send me an email, and I can answer any questions y'all have about the, the figures and the actuals. Yeah, I just have one comment. Uh, before the next committee meeting, can you send us out like in a day in advance so we can review it, please? Yes, sir. Will do. Um, okay, so the policies. Um, the July 26th meeting, we introduced uh, legislation to update, revise, and make some additions to our current policies. Um, currently, we have... 
uh, we're, we're reviewing the cash receipts policy, cash disbursement, um, credit cards, reimbursement policy, the internal auditing policy, financial reporting policy, and the debt service policy. Um, we normally do an annual review of the policies which follows the year in audit after we are audited on the previous year the auditor usually makes suggestions or you know based on the report that we receive this year we also did an internal audit around the same time so we've taken into consideration all of those um, recommendations from both auditors and we're currently reviewing these policies to be um, in compliance and in line with uh, those recommendations recommendations. Um, we've provided, we should be voting on those updates at the, is it the 23rd? The next council, the next port board meeting. Um, so I've given myself an August 16th deadline to have those to you guys so that the full board can review them and have any comments or make any changes prior to the meeting which will um, have the vote on the um, adoption, I mean on the revisions and updates. Um, any questions on that? I was just going to you answer my question. Actually, I was going to uh, ask that you submit that to us prior, mm -hmm. well in advance of the next board meeting. Yes, sir. I will try my hardest to get it to you before the 16th, uh, but that's the deadline I have, August 16th, which is seven days prior to the meeting. That's the Thursday prior to the uh, next board meeting. Um, next, uh, the Port Finance uh, Department is, we continue to work with the internal audit. We're currently working on a um, contract audit. Um, me and Mr. Duke has been in contact and that's currently, um, it's, it's undergoing. Any questions on that? Everything? Not from the table. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Any comments or questions, Ms. Uh, Riley? Audience? Next item, please. Vessel and security report, Mr. Durr. And good morning. Uh, things, fortunately, knock on wood, have been quiet. The river, the river is very busy. Of course, the lower end is slow, uh, as it has been for some time. But operations are normal at this time and uh, running smoothly. Uh, we've, we've short a few personnel. Uh, we've been going through the civil service process to get those folks hired and get those piece, uh, positions filled. Uh, uh, coming up with the height of the hurricane season, I'm hoping to get those, those folks on deck and trained. But other than that, uh, short any questions, uh, everything's good. Comments from the table? I just have one question. What, what was the final outcome of the barge land and facility in Bell Chase uh, as it relates to the waterline project? Was there any final decision on that? The decision that, uh, that they presented to us was that the substation or sub-pump station that they need to put in uh, basically needs to be installed directly about the center of the barge that we currently use for our rescue operations. So we need to start looking and we're going to have to move. Uh, of course, we agreed at this point, uh, they said it's going to cost a million dollars or some, a million and some change. If they had to do something else with that piece of property, another alternate, uh, and also there was too many restrictions on the lines if they did the alternate method. So they kind of pretty much put us in a position where uh, we were told that we need to, we need to move our operations. Uh, so we're starting to look out and find out where we can move them at and stay near to that same area. Um, I know it was mentioned in one area was the rock pile that PBG has. Um, that is not, at this time, not final. It would not be a suitable area. I've talked to the pilots associations and a few other folks. And that is a very dangerous area in the river. We've had two ship groundings in that area that actually went into the, the river Batcher um, it's in my years with the port. So it's a really kind of an area you don't want to set up shop to stage your boats. Thank you. Comments from the table? The audience? Hear none. Next item, please. Upcoming events, Ms. Nielsen. We have uh, several 
upcoming BCO meetings that are scheduled on August 10th in Kansas City, August 29th and 30th in St. Louis, and September 14th in Memphis. In addition to that, on August 14th, we'll have meetings and tours with Norfolk Southern Railroad and CCI. August 30th is Plaquemines Port Night at the Baby Cakes game. And on September the 11th, there is a 911 program and base tour at the NASJRB. And that's, that concludes my events. Could, could you email those to us, please? Sure can. Those are kind of written off fast. Sure can. What was the, uh, on the baseball event on August 30th, any positive response on that from? Yes. So far, we've gotten probably 12 or 13 just since yesterday. Okay. All right. Comments or questions from the table? Yes. Ms. Alvin. Yes, Ms. Nielsen, I'm not sure if this question is for you, but you mentioned um, the railroad. Uh, could, could I have Mr. Matthews and Mr. Sanders to give us a give me a brief update on the uh, the relocation of the um, of the railroad in regards to yes, ma'am. Uh, <clears throat> the rail is in two phases. The first is bringing the rail down to the port, and then the next phase would be the the uh, going around the relocation around the naval air station. All the environmentalists finished with that. That is probably the, or it is the lowest hanging fruit for an investor. We are working with an investor right now. We had to brief, um, actually the governor and, um, LED and, um, Department of Transportation. Um, the investor wants to pay the full amount, which is roughly about 330 million. And that would, as soon as, all the paperwork is lined up, uh, and they will start on that immediately, going around the Naval Air Station. So that's going to be a huge thing for our community and the outlying communities, too, to pick up those rail crossings. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're in. Yep, go ahead. Mr. Lapine. Am I on? Yep. <coughs> Excuse me. Ms. Um, Christy, you talked about um, the September 11th. What is that? Is that like a tour of the base? I was contacted about three months ago by the base commander asking if we could give him some help. We went down and talked to him and, uh, and the school folks. Uh, they have an award-winning school there. Uh, it's one of the hallmarks that when you look at bracking a base or keeping a base open you look at its community relationships that's a that's a very big one and they just felt like the story was not getting out there and being told so uh, it was determined that we would um, they are a funded school by our legislature and uh, we felt that maybe the legislatures really didn't know the great job that they were doing and where their money was going and what it was doing there on the school base. So it was determined that we would review the projects that we have working with the base at the same time, bring in our community leaders and our state legislatures, and even at the federal level, if they can make it, their <clears throat> calendars will allow, uh, to spend about a half a day uh, program at the school, allowing the school to uh, explain what they do. Uh, they are they receive the the highest award as far as a military sponsored school in a community. This is probably about the fifth time they've done that, and it's just a a well kept story. It doesn't need to be well kept. So it's a program that we decided to put together. We were going to do it at the end of the last school year, but the, they were in the state legislature was still in their special session, so we figured it'd be better to start when the school came back in. Thank you. All right, any more comments or questions? Abel, audience, your none. Next item, please.
Briefing and discussion items. A, discussion regarding communications protocol between port board and staff. We revised our communication protocols in January, but um, after some discussions here lately, we thought that we would re-engage with that. So we're looking over our policies. We'll be reviewing them with the chairman. Um, some of the things that came out were like uh, a below 50,000 contract gets reported on quarterly. We're going to start reporting that on a monthly basis. And also um, just the, the avenue that the information comes from the port staff to the board. Uh, and in talking with the chairman, uh, we're going to give him a heads up, but then we're going to put it out to all board members. So uh, just trying to uh, improve on those communications. Um, any changes, obviously, uh, they'll be brought to the board uh, to um, to be voted upon. And uh, we would like to get some drafts out as soon as we're finished with them to the board and, and get their uh, input. Thanks, Sandy. Any uh, comments from the table? I'd just make, like to make a quick comment. Um, I appreciate you guys taking the time last week to meet with me. And, um, you know, it is what it is. And at the end of the day, uh, I take ownership for any communication errors that may have failed from you guys to the entire board. And I think that's what's going to warrant this uh, enhanced communication protocol. Um, we all have busy schedules. We all don't check email. Some of us do. Some of us don't. At the end of the day, like I said, it, the buck stops with me. And I think by communicating to the committee first and then the full board, I think will eliminate any uh, communication errors or issues that are not getting put out. So thank you guys for, for that meeting, and I look forward to your... Uh, yes, sir. Any other comments from the table? Yes. Salvin. Yes, I would just like to ask, what would be the bold of communication? Will it be email on a shared drive? What, what, what would be the expectation? However y'all want it. If some people want a phone call, we'll make phone calls. If, um, if Certainly we want to put it on the shared drive. I think that's very important. Uh, and then we can send it directly email. We'll just we'll, we'll discuss these things with the chairman and the group and see how you guys want it. Okay, and that mean not just the, the the committee. That mean the entire company. Yes, ma'am, entire board, absolutely. Okay, thank you. I just like to add that, Ms. Salvin. I think it should be a combination, email uh, as, as a first courteous, and then you know followed up with putting it on the shared drive or whatever drive it deems necessary. That way, nothing gets missed. Everybody's informed, and everybody knows what's going on. So that's just my two cents. And I agree with your two cents. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, next item, please. B, introduced and or deferred resolutions and ordinances at July 26, 2018, Port Board Meeting. Go ahead. So, um, Ms. Ms. Williams already uh, announced that we've uh, introduced the policy updates that we'll send out to you no later than August 16th. Uh, the other item that was introduced was an extension of a contract with uh, Aries, which was previously Mariners, which is our um, IT service. Um, so obviously uh, with that contract, it needs to be approved by the board. Um, we're continuing to review that contract, but we wanted to get that out to you guys as soon as possible. That's why it was a part of the introductions that were sent out by the council secretary. Um, there's some procedural issues that we may switch up um, in the contracts over the next week or so in talking with uh, Aries, any changes to that, we'll send out to you guys immediately um, so that you have the most accurate information on what you're uh, voting on. Uh, but this is just a renewal period, and we're doing it extension to December 31st. Um, our plan is to uh, for, for January 1st to bid it out, um, to look at all different quotes and, and who would be the best IT company for us to, to, to service us. So, but this gets us to December 31st, so that when there's a decision made by the board by vote in November of December of the best uh, quote, the best bid from a company, then we can move forward January 1st with it already being budgeted. Uh, and also, last thing, uh, the deferred item. Yes. Let me go back to that item just that you, you brought it up. 
there's a um, an auto renewal at the end of the month. How are you guys handling that? Yes, there's an auto renewal. Um, last month we reached out to the company by email, essentially in writing, saying that we would like to uh, not automatically renew and just do a month-to-month -month, uh, contract until December 31st. They confirmed that email and agreed um, to, do, to go to a month-to-month -month contract, not to auto-renew, and that's why we're presenting to the board uh, next month for vote. And in that process, that gives us enough time to um, go out for multiple quotes and, and decide if we want to continue with this company for another year or two or what have you, or we want to move forward with someone else. Once again, Mr. Chairman, this just gives continuity of service while we're going through our bid process. All right. We do have one deferred item. This is regarding um, um, the lease on the port property with Mr. Fort Meyer. Um, my hat's off to Mr. Bartholomew. Um, his insistence made us look at this another way. We got our attorney involved in it, and he stated this is really not a lease, but it's a services contract. And so we talked to Mr. Bartholomew, told him he was satisfied with that. And um, again, kudos to him for pointing us in the right direction. Okay, so everybody's it's all situated and should be ready for a final approval. The next board meeting. Okay. Comments from the table? Audience? <clears throat> there are none. Wasn't there one other item that was deferred? Contracts? We have no comment on that. You want to discuss that one? We have no comment on that. We did the communication protocol about it. Right. Is that a part of the communication protocol with the contracts? Right. Right. Okay. I, I, I would hope we have some, some discussions on that prior to the next meeting. I think we've already started those discussions between us. I've already spoke to a few board members. So let's just keep that dialogue open and come up with the best solution for everyone. And, and what we can do, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, we can reach out to every single board member if there's any, any discussions that need to be had one-on-one -on -one or any ideas or concerns or feedback. We can, we, we're, you know, our door is always open um, to meet with us or phone call or what have you as we, as we put this together before the 16th to send out to the entire board. Before we, uh, before we close out, um, I'd just like to invite Mr. Sundstrom up, see if he's got anything to add from, from his perspective from Baton Rouge or uh, anything we can be looking out for for 2019 uh, with some port assistance from, from the feds or? Um, Eric Sundstrom. There you go. Eric Sundstrom, the uh, governmental affairs consultant for the port. Um, Y'all have seen, you know, the session ended in June. Um, uh, you've seen my reports that I've sent down through the various uh, legislation that's passed and didn't pass. Um, if y'all have any questions, I'd be happy to to uh, answer them. Thank you for renewing my contract for another year. I look forward to working with uh, the current port, uh, port board, the administration, and uh, any uh, new members that may be coming on board the first of the year. And I'm sorry to see some of them go. you got six months left for me. <clears throat> Use and abuse you. <laughs> it's been a pleasure, Eric. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. If I may, Mr. Chairman. Uh, actually, uh, Eric and I have already uh, been in discussions about um, some uh, potential legislations at the next uh, regular session in 2019. So uh, we've already been in discussions and trying to get work done and, and moving forward. So I really appreciate his efforts. And as you know, this will be a fiscal session coming up. Um, hopefully the state's fiscal house is in order after the last six months of uh, sessions. So... Um, I'd hate to say it should be easy, but maybe easier. Uh, the taxes were, sales tax was extended through 2023, I believe, so they are looking at a more stable revenue stream coming through. Uh, but the legislation will be limited 
two taxes and then five um, general purpose bills. So we've already been in discussion with some of those general purpose bills and and uh, working on authors and things like that. Get them nailed down quickly. Thank you, Ms. Alvin. Sure. Yes. Mr. Eric, we just wanted to, uh, we would have been, we felt as a committee, we would have been remiss if we had allowed you to sit in the audience and not, you know, try to get every penny of our dollar out of you. I understand. That that's that's that. why I'm here. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay. I just wanted to pass it. Thank you for your comment and all the work that you do. I appreciate that. <clears throat> Any other uh, comments or um, questions to come before the board, table, audience? Next item, please. Approval of the June 5th, 2018 meeting minutes. I'll offer. Second. Second, Mr. Lapine. Comments or questions? Machines open. Minutes are approved. 3 0. Make an offer to adjourn. Second. Second, Mr. Lapine. Comments or questions? Machine is open. Germany passes 3-0 at 1033. Thank you, everyone.